I've got this question a lot. And this particular one says I'd like uh, to see a video on color bias in artist paints. Now that word bias is popping up a lot lately as related to color. And then we can combine that with warm and cool. Let's see what we come up with. Any problem having to do with color or any question having to do with color should be answered according to the color wheel. So taking the concept of bias, which really means to lean, we can look at the color wheel for our answers. So let's do just a little bit of an analysis here. Let's start with the three primary hues, red, yellow, and blue. And those hues give us that 12 hue color wheel that we are accustomed to seeing, the traditional one. Now let's go to temperature. The temperature is caused by how we feel about heat. The whitest heat we see, the, the hottest, feels more yellow. But then we, when a, a fire starts cooling down, it begins to get orange, more orange, and more red. And so then the next coolest color, which is still very, very warm, will be red. So that's how we get the warm side of the color wheel, mixtures of yellow and red. Then the cool blue we associate with cold, with uh, skin turning blue when we're very, very cold, or with how we sense blue. So blue then is the coolest color, and, this ha and the mixtures of blue into other colors is how we get the cool side of the color wheel. All right, so see, that's a very simple thing. The concept of warm and cool all derives from our perception of color as associated with warm and cool. So, all those colors on this side of the color wheel then are the ones mixed with blue, are the ones that feel bluer, those are the cool. And then, of course, over here, as I said before, there's the warm. Now, what do we mean by bias? No hue is stilted, meaning every hue can lean towards another hue. The color wheel kind of misleads us in a way because it divides the colors in order to able, enable us to sort of get a perception of these color, uh, color characteristics. But every color that we can find in a tube might lean one way or another as it would be positioned on the color wheel. Now let me show you what I'm talking about. So I'm going to take uh, Hansa Yellow Light here. And let's just put Hansa Yellow Light right here. Now, that color or that hue, if you compare it with the hue that you see right here, that hue feels as if it's not exactly this, but it's leaning a little bit towards orange. But we'll call it yellow. But it's not the only yellow. Now let's, let's take that even further. Let's take a little bit of that Hansa Yellow White and show you something else that you might get in a tube. I'm going to add just a touch, not very much at all, but just a touch to, uh, uh, into it of, um, of orange and look at what you have. Can you see that this is a little different from that? This leans in this direction on the color wheel. Let's do that a little bit more. And you see, color, hue, is a continuous thing. So we might call a hue yellow when it's actually leaning more towards orange, or you'll see in just a moment, leaning more towards green. You see, you might even still call this yellow. And let's do it a little bit more. So at one point, if you think of this as a continuous, uh, continuous line that would move from yellow to yellow-orange, at one point you stop, feel, stop feeling it as yellow and it begins to feel like yellow-orange. Then that might be different from individual to individual because the cones in our eyes read the color, but we are all 
constructed maybe just a little bit different so uh, we might have different perceptions of that chances are at one point everybody's going to call it yellow orange let's see if it's yellow orange yet so I'll put another one right here now you see now it's beginning to feel more like yellow orange at least to my perception but somebody else might look at that and still call it yellow especially if you don't have these colors to compare it with so if you just saw that color you might still call it yellow now we'll go one step further and get a true yellow orange and just squeeze it right in here now now that you might really call yellow orange or you might even begin to sort of call that one orange you get my point but these are leaning all of these are leaning warm they're leaning towards the warm side of the wheel therefore they have a bias of warm or you might say they have a bias towards red other people might say they have a bias towards orange it all means the same thing because as they begin to progress in this direction they're going to, eventually you're going to hit red at that point you're going to begin to move out of the warm side of the color wheel because you're going to begin to have blue added into it all right let's go a little, another step further now I want to uh, rinse this out of the brush and show you the bias in the other direction now while I'm doing this I want to tell you something tubes you find in this person asked particularly about tube colors tube colors you find in the art store will have different labels on them some of them might be called lemon yellow or some might be called uh, cadmium yellow light or cadmium yellow medium or cadmium yellow deep there are a number of names for yellows now each one of those yellows is going to have a bias there is a, an attempt to give us a yellow that would be what you would call spectrum yellow and what that means is that at its high saturation is as close to what we perceive as yellow as possible that's as close as I can give you to that kind of definition so Windsor and Newton for example have a Windsor yellow uh, which they have attempted to get it right on the nose but then you'll find other yellows that will lean more towards warm and uh, and towards cool now so how do you know the difference does it make that much difference well the keener your eyes get the more difference it makes but this is more or less for your knowledge so that you'll realize that there's not just one yellow but a yellow can be leaning in both directions now I'm going to pull go back in this is the Hansi yellow I'm going to move back into the Hansi yellow here put it down on the palette so I can start at the same place now we'll put just a little bit of of green I'm just going to reach the green has blue in it so I could put blue but it would take a lot less I mean a lot 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 less so I'm just going to go into this yellow this is called yellow green and it's just a little bit of this yellow green into the hence of yellow light uh, which is uh this that's Utrecht's um, hence of yellow light let's, let me just show you now look can you see can you feel that that is slightly cooler that it's leaning more in the direction of green or in the direction of blue means the same thing because we're working with the primaries and so yellow leaning in this direction is leaning towards green which means it's leaning towards blue because blue plus yellow equals green so it's really a very simple thing if you don't try to make too much of it now this is works better in your thinking and you'll get you'll have a lot more clarity about it if you call these by their hue names if you call all your colors by their hue names so uh, if you have a tube of paint that says phthalo blue well if you just think of the hue of blue and if you know phthalo blue moves a little bit more towards yellow you'll know that's blue with a bias towards yellow if you have a tube that's called ultramarine, ultramarine blue you think in terms of blue and you'll know after working with it that ultramarine blue leans a little bit more towards red in this direction so it has a bias towards red or bias towards violet meaning it's leaning in that direction 
So that's the way. I'm not going to go through all the colors, but just want to go through yellow to get you going on how this works. Now let's see here. We would still call this yellow perhaps? Probably would still call that yellow. You see it's a little bit greener than this one. And let's see how far we can take it now before we get over to its analogous neighbor there. So let's put just a little bit more. A little bit more and here we go. It's a little bit greener, just a little bit. You see, it's very gradual. And really, that's what we have to understand about color. There is no point that you can, there's no, no, no one of these that you could point to and say, that is the yellow. Because all these will play the same kind of role in your painting, except if you want a color to be a little bit cooler, then for some reason it may be that you're doing spring leaves or something like that. Or if you're doing fall leaves. We usually think of spring leaves having kind of that green tint, but don't put, don't take that to the bank. And we usually think of the fall leaves and more uh, having more of the orangey or gold tints. So there's a whole lot more to it than that. But the main thing here is to help you to understand what we mean or what what artists mean when they use that word bias. It simply means that a color is leaning towards another color. All right, I'm going to go one more time over here, and this time I'm going to reach, well, I'm probably making too big of a jump. Well, let's just add a little bit more yellow in there. At the point where it stops, we, can, we stop perceiving it as yellow and begin to perceive it as yellow-green. And that is a, a perception thing. Now you can see, probably we all are going to perceive this as yellow-green. Now you can see quite a jump between this and this. That means that we could have continued that probably for maybe four or five more steps before we actually got to yellow green. Same thing over here. I made quite a jump uh, from the from the or from the yellow orange uh, from the yellow orange yellow bias towards orange to the yellow orange. So you can see you can work out every color problem, every color question you have if you simply know how to read the color wheel, and you can always begin with the primary colors and then see the relationship of primary colors to the other colors and then you can begin to kind of understand how color works but for now I hope that perhaps you understand what we mean when you hear the word color bias. Be sure and view all of our quick tips. While you're doing so subscribe to the channel, click on the bell so you'll always get a notice when we produce a new quick tip which is every week. If you have a question, leave it in the comments section and we'll make a quick tip for you. Also, take a trip over to DyingMinds.com where I have full length lessons, downloads, DVDs, lots of other stuff there, some free stuff for you. And while you're there, you can subscribe to the newsletter and that way you'll always be informed every time we do something new.